Hey, hey there, business owner. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. This is our weekly episode, and I'm so happy you are here. Let's get started. Hey there, entrepreneur. This is Annette Walter. Welcome to this week's podcast. I am your host. I am a business growth coach, operational strategist, and growth-minded entrepreneur just like you on the evolution of scaling two businesses to 10 million and beyond. You are in the right place if you are looking for a pep in your step to feel surrounded by other entrepreneurs like yourself and to really gain real information, real talk, real business. Today, my guest is Eva Claire Sinkowski. She is the founder and CEO of Optimize Me Nutrition and also the host of the podcast, The Consistency Project. Her corporate background is from CrossFit. She spent many years there, and now she has launched a business that offers corporate wellness and personal wellness that is focused towards how to add things to your nutrition and improve your nutrition with really simple formulas and just a really strong, uh, simplistic approach to nutrition. And we spoke a lot about the importance of nutrition as an entrepreneur, and it's just one of those really great topics that you could go on and on and on and talk more about, and you're going to gain so much from my time with Eva Claire today. And in the show notes, what you'll notice is the link to her podcast and um, to her website if you are interested in learning more or following her on social media. She drops really great uh, daily tips and daily daily advice on, on nutrition. And this is such an important topic that we need to remember. We need to take care of ourselves as business owners. It is so important. And Lord knows we have those days that fly by and we don't even get to eat or we just somewhat stress eat. So I'm right there with you, entrepreneur, and that's why we are here together. I am on a mission to build a community of growth-minded, purpose-driven entrepreneurs like you so that you feel surrounded, you feel less alone in your business, you have a place to go to share resources, to gain leadership tips, and to really keep learning and keep on being a curious learner like you are as you are growing your entrepreneurial empire, okay? Uh, If you haven't had the chance to set up a 20-minute breakthrough session with me, I don't know what you're waiting for. This is a powerful, stress-free, judgment-free time for you and your business, okay? Okay. You just need to vent. Sometimes you just need to get it off your chest, and there is so much clarity in that process, okay? So make sure you're reaching out, and that's the first step. That's the hardest step sometimes is saying, okay, let's talk. And I encourage you to ask me more, to learn more through the website, iEvolveConsulting.com, about our groups. I run um, the Entrepreneur Empowerment Group which is a bi-weekly accountability and leadership and coaching group with growth-minded entrepreneurs uh, like you. So, so don't miss out on that. It is just beyond productive, beyond profitable for the entrepreneurs in the group. And like I said, you don't need to do this alone. Enjoy today's episode and keep evolving, entrepreneur. I am so proud of you. Welcome, welcome, Eva Claire. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am great. I'm really excited you are here today. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Today, we are joined by Eva Claire, E.C. Sinkowski, mm-hmm. and she is the founder and CEO of Optimize Me Nutrition and also the host of an amazing podcast called The Consistency Project. So, I can't even wait to get started and hear more about you and your business. So just take us back, rewind a little bit from the beginning. You can go to childhood, to college days, to whatever was that spark of entrepreneurship in your life. Our audience is all business owners of every different level of their business, all different size businesses, all different industries. So your story is really going to help um, them today with mm. their journey. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. I don't know that I have to go back that far in terms of the entrepreneurship 
part, I was working for CrossFit corporate for some time and was doing a lot of different hats for them, especially because they were growing quite rapidly when I was there. And I was working on designing their systems and products and implementation as they scaled quite rapidly. And that was great and challenging, but I sort of got to a point, I think I'd been there full-time professionally for seven years when I just sort of was like, I need a new challenge and change. <laughs> okay. So tell us what, what year did you start with them? Let, let's give a, damp, a date stamp here. Yeah. I technically started with them part-time in t- uh, 2006, working as a trainer on their weekend seminars, giving lectures for people that were going to be future CrossFit trainers. But that uh, at the time I was working in environmental consulting full-time hmm. and uh, ultimately I gave up environmental consulting in 2011 to work for CrossFit full-time and more of an administrative capacity operations and product, and then still continue to work on the weekends for them at seminars. Um, So yeah, I technically worked for them from 2006 to 2017, but kind of the full-time era was 2011 to 2017. Well, and if you really stop and think about fitness and nutrition and what that landscape looked like back at that time, you know, and, and you're getting to really witness this phenomenon growing. So tell us just a little bit about that. And like, what really hit you from the excitement and like the giddiness standpoint that made you leave environmental to go into this new space altogether. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was a a pretty interesting trade-off. I I loved my environmental consulting work, had a really awesome mentor there. Um, but I didn't really see a lot of the end result of my work. We did a lot of expert witness work, litigation work. And so we were kind of shifting money among insurance companies <laughs> is the best way I can describe it, even though the day-to-day work was actually quite interesting. So it was hard to sort of see the impact of your work. Where of course, when working something with like CrossFit, um, something in fitness or wellness, you, you see the impact much more readily and you hear about it all the time. So maybe it was a little self-serving, <laughs> but it's nice to know when your work is, is being you know, appreciated and valued by people. And so that certainly afforded that in spades. Yes. Well, and when you can see the impact, mm-hmm. that is just huge. And I, that actually struck a chord for me because, you know, I think that's why we end up doing the work that we end up doing, right? Because it does, it does fill that cup and, and strike that chord. So you're at CrossFit back 2006. They're growing. Yeah. They're growing. Are you, are you based out of Maryland at that time? No, I think at that time I moved around a bunch. I was in Boston at that time. Okay. All right. So you're in Boston. So then walk us through the next chapter. Yeah. So I was still in Boston when I transitioned to them full-time. I stayed with them. Um, Like I said, full-time, I moved to California and Colorado. But as part of their accreditation requirements, um, our, our primary course was accredited. As part of the accreditation requirements, we had to, um, some of the senior staff members had to do continuing education, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to start a second master's degree as my continuing ed, just because I was like, why not? Um, And the idea was, you know, let's see what happens. I just am interested in nutrition, of course, and, and CrossFit uses nutrition. And I had some background in biochem, et cetera. So I started it, but of course, once I got involved, I was like, this is, this is good stuff. I'm, I'm very interested. Right. Um, and I of course completed the degree and, and it was kind of with being at CrossFit for so long and kind of getting to the level of which my position was going to go combined with doing the nutrition degree. And that's where I was going with, like, I needed a new challenge and change. It was very clear to me that I had to leave just for my own personal growth. Yeah, Absolutely. So huge accomplishment. Congratulations on that. Um, So then at that point, are you like, okay, I'm going to start a business and do my own thing here? Or how does that, you know, how long were you thinking about this? Yeah. Um, You know, I, at first I was, it was like, I just got to finish the degree. So I pretty much had overlapped full-time work in the degree for a year plus and just felt I was doing kind of my degree a disservice. So I re- resigned to finish my degree full-time and that had about four or five months. And in that time I was focused on, okay, I'm going to open up a one-on-one nutrition consulting business. That just sort of made sense. That was the plan for most people. Um, and I did, I think that was pretty short lived. I think that lasted three months <laughs> and just realized it wasn't for me. Um, 
it, it wasn't really tapping into, I think, some of my stronger skill sets. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit of a pickle because, you know, you've just resigned from a position that, of course, I, I loved in many ways and was part of a big movement for a long time, so went out on your own and decided, oh, shoot, I'm not sure this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that that's very relatable. I think that that's very real. Yeah. Those feelings. Yeah. Absolutely. So then what? So then technically, I would say the next year plus, I kind of did nutrition, but I was really looking for work. I wanted to get back into something that was product or operations. Um, and so I kept kind of nutrition as a hobby. I was growing social media and I was thinking about it, but it, it was just to me, I hadn't figured out what to do with it yet. You know, it was definitely an interest and I didn't just get the degree for, you know, a superfluous reason, but I just didn't know what to do with it. Right. Um, but thankfully the hobby kind of turned enough business <laughs> that I was like, okay, this can work. This can work. Cause part of my issue was I love the education part of it. I love problem solving for people. Um, and so I was like, how do I package this in a way that, that really works as a business? Um, and so that eventually I think is, I started, let's see, mid 2019 in earnest of kind of going down that route of an education uh, platform. Absolutely. So tell us what that looks like today, your product, yeah. your offering, everything. Yeah, I have a few different offerings. So I work both business to business and direct to consumer business to business. Um, most of the clients in that area have been gyms, no surprise, CrossFit gyms are a large percentage of that, but helping them run nutrition programs, right? I think one of the challenges that many gyms face is they open up a gym, they love fitness, but then they quickly find out that their members don't get as much many results as if, if they don't do nutrition, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a pain point for them. So, you know, I want it to become a way that they can outsource their nutrition needs. And so I offer programs for that. Um, and then similarly, but not exactly the same as corporate wellness programs. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the business to business side. And then the direct to consumer, I have kind of different level courses for people to work through. And I, I try to do my higher level offering there and sort of a, not just a buy off the shelf online course, not that there's anything wrong with that, but one of the things that's difficult about nutrition is accountability. So I, I try to do it almost in like a, like if you're taking a college class online, like there's interaction with me, there's Q and A's, I'm answering questions because I really want people to get through the course. I don't want this just to be this like tangible theoretical idea that they bought a course for. So those, are, those are the main offerings. Absolutely. Well, and I know you and I talked about this the other day when we were talking about how companies are now through their HR companies, really investing a lot in corporate wellness mm -hmm. and making sure that they have designated budgets and, you know, dollars set aside for great corporate wellness programs, especially as mental health has become such a severe issue through COVID and the working at, from home and, and the different changing environments. So that is so powerful right now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what I really like about your program is, um, is the approach. So just share with us, you know, kind of your, your perspective and your approach to, to nutrition. Yeah. I generally think nutrition has been made overcomplicated and too restrictive for most people. I, I think nutrition can be easy. Now that doesn't mean that every day is gonna be ice cream and cake all day, but it, uh, it does mean that we don't have to kind of swing to these really obsessive um, endpoints to get the results that a lot of people want. Mm -hmm. And so what I actually do for my first kind of couple steps with people is we focus on adding things to the diet, not taking away in a non-restrictive way and also to give the user a lot of autonomy about their choices. So I think I see that a lot too with diets. It's like, here are the 10 perfect meals to make for the rest of your life, or here are the list of three foods you can eat forever, right? And it's, and it's just like, yeah, no one's gonna follow that. <laughs> we gotta have this thing last for a long time if we actually want people to stick for, to it. So the main thing that I lead with is the 800 gram challenge. That's to eat 800 grams by weight um, of fruits and veggies each day. And then the person continues to eat whatever else they want. And, and they get to pick the fruits and veggies and they can be cooked or canned, you know, and it includes olives and avocado and potatoes and all these things. And so people are definitely in the beginning are like, wait a minute, that's it. And I'm like, that's it. That's mm -hmm. all I need you to do to get started. And certainly there's ways that we can make that more complicated, but that's a wonderful first step for at least 80% of people. 
It's great. And then, I mean, it's almost like, you know, the book, everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. Like mm. people don't like when you take things away from them, but they like when you <laughs> give them things, right? Totally. So explain, explain that formula, 800 uh, mm. grams, because you said that very quickly. Yeah. It's 800 grams um, by weight. So a lot of people think about it. Oh, is that calories or is that carbohydrates? No, no, no. By weight. So literally you would put an orange on a scale and you'd see it probably weighs close to 200 grams. Now, some people aren't into weighing their food. That's okay. They can do it by estimating your adult closed fist is about a cup. About six of those will get you close to 800 grams as well. So you could also think like six things a day. Right, <laughs> absolutely. And you're going to get there. Um, the number actually came out of a study. Uh, it was a study looking at fruit and vegetable consumption relative to things like cancer, cardiovascular disease, stroke. And they found, of course, that risk went down at the 800 gram level. Hmm. But, you know, even if the science is wrong, which, you know, there's lots of studies out there. One of the things that I did with the idea when I first saw that study in 2017 was I tested it, right? I spent about six months doing it myself, collecting the data, putting the rules around it, comparing it to existing government guidelines, comparing it to other studies to really think like, is this a realistic amount? You know, what kind of calories are we looking at? Like I'm tall. Is this realistic for someone who's, you know, five, four or whatever, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So I really played with it because I wanted it to work regardless of the science is just like a basic diet approach. And it did. And, and ultimately that's what I launched early 2018 and, mm -hmm. and has gotten some traction since. Yeah. You know, it's just, you were so smart and, and data driven. And that's what is just powerful because oftentimes, you know, it's like, how can we tell as many people as possible that this is a real thing? This is a new thing. Like this is not a new thing. This is a studied, you know, a studied thing that more people need to know about. And that's just why I love your purpose and I love your mission and your company. Thanks. So, so tell us about the podcast, which yeah. has just really gained great traction, great audience. Yeah. Thank you. It's called the consistency project. Um, because I think that's really what's missing. I, I, like I said, I think nutrition and health is actually easy in concept. What's difficult is the consistency of it, you know, and I think we get a little bit bored. We want something new and different when really we just have to keep doing the basics over and over again. And so what I try to do on that podcast, um, the format changes a little bit, but most often it's about a 20 minute kind of direct topic on a specific issue in nutrition could also be fitness and lifestyle though. Mm -hmm. to give people the context and the understanding, hopefully enough of the science, but always bringing it back to, so what that means is we need to go for a walk today, or we need to eat fruits and vegetables today. Like it keeps kind of coming back to some really basic practices, even though the science can get quite technical if we want to get on the molecular biology. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the application of it is quite uh, simple, maybe boring once we have to think about it in kind of the long term, and, and that's kind of my, my voice in the space. Mm -hmm. Well, simplifying things yes. that the consistency is huge. So we'll be sure to drop the link to um, not only the company, and, but also to the podcast in the show notes so that people can just sh click right on that link and go through to check that out and hit subscribe for her. Please, um, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Right. I know it's like, when you look at podcasts, there's so many different types of things out there and uh, you had mentioned um, that we get bored, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I talk about this all of the time. Business owners get bored because we are we are curious learners. We are continuous learners. And sometimes it just feels like our business is stale or we're, we don't like what we're doing in our business at that season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> you get that, right? You do. Yes. And it's challenging. And consistency is key in showing up in your business. So there's just so many parallels, but not only that, the parallel between being of a healthy mind and a healthy body as a business owner. So mm -hmm. is there any topic that really speaks specifically or pops specifically into your head when I say that? Like mm -hmm. What's the most important thing we can do to show up as healthy entrepreneurs, healthy leaders mm -hmm. uh, in our business to help us be clear? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm probably going to have a bias towards a baseline level of good nutrition, a little bit of exercise, good amount of sleep. You know, I think it's classic for the entrepreneur to put that kind of last, um, because they're busy because they have a lot on their plate to do, but I think kind of going for that walk or that exercise or making sure you have good sleep is actually going to be one of your best assets when you have to do a lot of work the next day. Right. So, and even the, I mean, one of the 
most common reactions I get from the 800 gram challenge is that is not actually weight loss, although people experience that. It's more that they feel better and have more energy, right? So even for that entrepreneur reaching for the banana over the Doritos or whatever it is, is going to be a good a good approach. So for me, that's the first thing I think about for sure. And um, you know, even though I'm busy as well, like yes, I make that time for working out and sleep and all of that stuff. Like that is that is almost number one priority, I think. Yeah. Yes, I've been doing so much research lately on sleep and um, reading a lot about it and trying to really be disciplined about that because it is just such a powerful thing. <laughs> totally. That- we all do, you know, it's free, right? But then there's so many things that we allow to interrupt it or creep mm-hmm. into it or different boundaries that we break depending on the week um, or the day, really. So, so what gets you through the day? What's your personal mantra, your personal go-to when you're feeling doubt or fear or, or just unknowingness in your business? What kind of grounds you and what's your personal thing that you say to yourself to get through it? Yeah. Gosh, I'm not really sure if I have one mantra or not. I I do like the phrase, I actually just put it on social media today, but uh, I used it for the nutrition context, of course, but I think it works in everything. And that is if nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. So, you know, we actually have to just kind of plow through the situation (laughs) and plow might not always be the best time. Sometimes we need to be a little bit more finer with our our choice of action, but yeah, I mean, you have to do the work and you just have to get through it. So typically uh, when you're overwhelmed with something, it's like, just how do I figure out how to get through this um, is kind of definitely one of the things that I try to (laughs) try to think about (laughs) get me going through the day. Yeah, absolutely. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. Correct. And that's, that's the, the hard work is just, you know, one of the, one of the toughest things Uh, I've been just going to a new gym recently. And there's a saying on the wall that, that says uh, to get tough, you have to be like, be tougher, you know, Mm -hmm. like to, to do the, to, to get the results, you have to do the work, right? Like, it's just like, nobody else is going to do it for us. No, (laughs) for us, right. And same in our business. Like nobody's going to drive that ship every day. Like it is us, right? Correct. Yeah, for sure. Well, good. So what's, what's to come? What do you want to put out to the universe? How can our audience help you and support you? Yeah. I mean, I have, well, I think one of the things that I'm really excited about in the nutrition space is figuring out ways for people to actually do these practices better. Like I like the 800 gram challenge idea and I have short programs around it because I like people actually doing that, right? Like I actually want people to eat the fruits and vegetables, not just read the studies about them. I want people actually going to the gym. And so I'm working on developing a product to do that. Maybe it might take on an app form um, or mm-hmm. not, but I mean, we always have to remember that the the power is in the action, not learning about the action. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what I, what I'm excited about. What I want to get done is, is to help people really stay accountable and consistent in the long term. Um, and put it out there to your audience. Yeah. I mean, if, if companies or groups or whoever is looking as a way to get nutrition as part of their program, I'm interested to talk to them and help get their group going for sure. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. And is there any way, do you have a group on Facebook or anything outside of the website that we're going to drop here that might be helpful? Yeah, I have a social media presence on Instagram and Facebook. I don't have groups besides that. Um, But yeah, those are great ways to get a hold of me for sure. You want to just mention your name? Yeah, Optimize Me Nutrition. Yep. Optimize Me Nutrition. Yep. So, okay, perfect. Well, good. Well, I have to say... I, simple formulas stick and the 800 gram challenge, I think is just so powerful and such a great way to think about simplifying nutrition for no matter what stage of nutrition and journey you are and and chapter you are in, in your life or season you are in in life. Like that Mm -hmm. is something that if you're walking through an airport, which we will one day, you know, be thoughtful about picking up fruits and vegetables over, like you said, the the bag of Doritos or in your kitchen, you know, some people say like, you know, snack from the fridge, not from the pantry, like Mm. those different things, like all seem to stick. But I really like that, that 800 gram and the, and the fist, the six is a really good cheat sheet. So keep on doing what you are doing because it is 
so important. It is the foundation of our, our, our everything. And there are business owners out there that need you. There are companies out there that need you. And you were so, 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 so smart, Eva Claire, all of the, all of the, the, the studies and everything that you've done and, um, you know, just keep on rocking it. I'm really, really, really proud of you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Wow. What an episode. Did you learn something new? I hope so. I am so happy you were able to be here with us today. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a review and I will be sure to read it and respond to you. Also, if you'd like to email me, my email address is urock at iEvolveConsulting.com. Hit subscribe and every Tuesday you'll get notification when the next episode drops. We really have some amazing interviews and tips in the future. Anything you need, I'm here for you. I want you to keep your momentum. I want to help you stay accountable. I want you to stay inspired. I want you to evolve. So please let me know what you need and I'd love to hear from you. Take care until next time.